Death. What makes it a memorable character? What makes it so appealing? What makes it a great character design? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to argue it makes for a great character design and it's all because of a simple triangle. So I went to the theaters one night to watch this movie Puss in Boots 2 The Last Wish and this character Death was introduced and like everybody else in the theater I was like pretty intrigued I was like wow that was a great entrance it was literally like a horror film in a children's movie so good I was intrigued I was curious I was fascinated and I was like trying to figure out my brain was trying to figure out like what makes it a great character design and all of a sudden this shot came on screen this one right here and I was like ah see it yep I found it do you see it do you see the freaking triangle yeah, it's because I'm a freaking triangle. Let me explain. See, I'm a character designer. I design characters to tell stories to comics and animation and all that stuff. And I've learned in the past couple of years about this principle called the shape language. Every character that you see that are really well designed actually have a core shape motif. What does that mean? There are say multiple key shapes, right? Like your circle, your square, and your triangle. And each shape has an emotional motif that it transfers to the audience or the viewer who's sort of, you know, looking at that. The characters that are designed with more rounded shape language in terms of a circle are more approachable, more soft, more feely, safey, you know, safey feely, and, and makes up for say main character because you want your main characters to be approachable and soft. An example of the rounder shape language is Genie from Aladdin. The entire character is designed to be like a safe playground for kids. Every ounce of that character has some sort of circular shape cooked into it. That's it. That's what they do. They just cook these shapes into these things. And you can see even the things that are meant to be pointy in that character are more rounded in nature. And then there are characters that are designed with a more boxier shape language, which sort of indicates a sense of stability, ground and often you know it indicates a sense of not willing to change for example the character from movie up right it's sort of very boxy in nature from its face to the body to the fingers everything and then there are the triangles this shape language is often reserved for the villains Jafar from Aladdin if you look at the character you can see multiple triangles cooked into that character from a staff to his head to many many little things pointy sharp edge triangles why? Because triangles give you a sense of sharpness and edginess, a pointedness. It has a point and, and something that is often pointy like a blade is sharp and it could kill you. And that's what villains do. They could kill you. That's the point of having a villain. So designers, character designers often use this triangular shape language in the villains to make it more edgy and villain-esque. And here's how they used it in death. <laughs> This is gonna be fun. This was the very first scene that I noticed how this character sort of looked like, right? There was these sharp triangles that you can sort of see throughout the design right here and even to the tail, right? Very, very sharp edges. It just shows that, you know, this is the language. This is the visual shape motif that they're going for, for this character. Once I started noticing that, I started noticing it pretty much everywhere else. And I think it's not just me. I think they have willingly cooked these shapes in to show you this is what this character is all about. Look at the nose. Look at how sharp and pointy the nose is. And then they've made the beard, right? If you exaggerate it, right? You can see these triangular shapes just being and going everywhere and either if you find something else is just you know like so sharp look at the hood like how they've designed you know the hood it's sort of like boxy but but you, you know i'm seeing it as like say two triangles that are sort of put together but the idea is this sharp 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 you know everything is just sharp the things that are meant to be soft are sharp as in they don't just go like i'm gonna keep it just sharp like that they just use that as a base and on top of that you know they design this rounded-esque thing but the foundation right there it's a bit of a triangle you can see that you know it has multiple triangles even in say mini frames and they've crafted each frame not even all the frames just certain frames that are very very important to show you that there are so many pointy edges like the ears of the character like the teeth that this character has look at this frame right how sharp this frame is you know the blade of that character the sharpness that is going on along with the deadly eyes death has contrasting that with the soft 
timid eyes of Puss in Boots. Interesting. Another aspect that makes this villain so villainous even is this complete contrast it has to the main character, Puss. Puss is this super small, cute little cat. It's not a predator, it's a cute cat. Whereas you have literally, look at the size of this damn thing. It's this big bad wolf right here and they made it so contrasting in terms of the shape and you can also see it in the first scene. How small Puss is and how large this thing is. It's literally like five times, you know, five or six times more taller than Puss. So that is another thing. Using size to create some sort of contrast between the main character and then the villainous opposite antagonist character. And another thing that I've used is color temperature. I was looking at this death character and I was like, man, why does it seem even more, you know, more, more, there's something more to it than just triangles, right? What is that thing? Then I was like, wow, the red freaking eyes, right? Clearly, the red eyes that this character has, it just shows that sense of devil, that evil. Now, in color theory, the color red is often used as a way to symbolize danger because red is this really highly saturated color that travels farther than often much colors, right? meaning you can see it far away, far away, right? That's why you, they use red in signals to tell you to stop. This is not good, it's dangerous. If you continue in your car, you might get you know hit by another car. That's one of the reasons you're being trained by you know somewhat to you know to see red as a more dangerous color and that's why they used red here because it also symbolizes devil the you know fire and fire burns you you know see all these metaphorical things they've used that thing and then the coolest part is this with this red they've contrasted the rest of the character with say cool colors meaning cool colors are you know so more cooler in nature like your blues things like that red is a warm color they've sort of contrasted that and they call this a complementary color scheme in color theory and this coolness symbolizes death because what happens when you die you become cold your body turns blue so blue contrasted with this warm color makes this character really really stand out and that's what i found very interesting i don't know if the character designers were doing these things willingly or all of these things are just coming to them intuitively but you can see why this character design works so that is what makes this character super super appealing cooking in this concept of shape language into it through minuscule minuscule ways and major ways the overall shape language the design of the character is triangular in nature and then there are very many sharp elements that are made into it. This contrast of coolness and warmness in the character and then contrasting that with the main character who we want the antagonist to be opposite the protagonist which is big and small, warm. Puss is warm in nature. They're cold, cold colors, right? It's this complete contrast that's what made this death visually appealing but at the same time you have to understand that there are very many factors that made this character click. It's just, just not the visual thing. So I'm just talking about the visual because I'm a visual guy. But there are other things like the voice acting. The person who did it was just immaculate. He was really suited for this character because of his articulousness of his voice. And then the motive that this entire character of death had. It was not just a simple villain that is out to kill the hero or out to sort of take over the world. It had a reason, it had a purpose that you and I sort of can empathize with. Puss in Boots had nine lives and it was wasting his life away. And this character on the last life of Puss is coming out and saying, hey buddy, you've been wasting your life away. I don't think you deserve this one. So therefore, I'm gonna take it. And you're as an audience is sitting back and saying, holy crap, he's right, he is right. I like the hero, I want the hero to win, but the villain is right. And that's how you write great characters. You want to connect with the villain and you want the villain to be more stronger and powerful to a point that the hero cannot win. You have to make him that powerful. And that's what makes the last scene of this film also very, very engaging. Where Puss stands up to this character, to his fear, because he was having panic attacks through the entire film. And he was in the last scene, he was sitting there and going, Man, I want to stand up this character, even though it may kill me. And that's what made this film great. And that's what made this character, this character called Death, one of the greatest designs I've seen in a while. Hey, if you want to know more design principles like this to learn to draw your own characters for comics and illustrations, check out my 100-day art program, Drawing Camp. Or if you want to figure things out yourself, check out this video that I've made on character design.